Hi, this is Bruce Gordon with Multiplying Freedom, and we are taking up in this week's class schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a very big topic. That's why we will be taking two weeks to do it. Two weeks, first week, this class will be on understanding schizophrenia and its implications for deliverance and healing ministry. Uh, whether you are uh, dealing with schizophrenia yourself or you have a loved one, we will give you at least a basic understanding of why things are tricky and what we can do. Uh, the what we can do part will be largely dealt with next week, but we will get into some of it this week as well, and we will pray. So we are approaching this. We're using uh, we're using a good deal of what modern medicine and psychiatry have taught us about schizophrenia. They have understood a good deal of it, and they've helped it become better understood and more clearly defined. But ultimately, we see the issue as a spiritual one. And so we are going to advocate for spiritual means of dealing with it. That being said, we are not advocating for people stopping their therapy, stopping their doctors, stopping their meds. Our approach is we will minister to you. We will attempt to get you healed and free. And assuming that things go in that direction and God is faithful, your therapist or your psychiatrist will be seeing some progress and they are quite likely to be in agreement to do something different for your treatment than they've been doing in the past when they saw no movement. So again, our ministry is not a substitute for therapy, psychiatry, or medications. It's not a substitute for your own judgment. Everybody needs to make their own judgments and everybody needs to make up their own mind how they're going to approach this. What we're doing is we are attempting to deal with root causes which should make symptoms less troublesome. So pray, understand what's going on and use discernment for everything we are saying here. This class will be more psych based. Next week's class will be deliverance based and we will deal with things from a deliverance perspective. When you're looking at schizophrenia, you see a number of very serious issues going on in people that have <clears throat> this condition. And what you've got is you will be seeing uh, people who are double-minded, they're wavering, they're all over the place, they can't make up their mind, they can't make decisions, they're not stable, emotionally, mentally, and otherwise, they're in very, very serious condition. It's very difficult to maintain relationships, maintain work, maintain ministry if you're dealing with this. One of the things that many people are aware is there's a movie that a lot of people have seen. It's called Beautiful Mind, a very brilliant scientist who had schizophrenia, and he worked through it over a long period of time. Lots of trouble for him and his family over the years. That's a dramatized version of some of the things that schizophrenics may go through. We are looking at rejection and rebellion as the two main issues that schizophrenics deal with. If you know anybody who's schizophrenic, we're going to be looking at these in detail. The rejection part leads to a great deal of hopelessness, despair, depression, just out of it, can't do things, no interest in normal activities, just really not himself. The rebellion side of it, which is very serious, gets into anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, retaliation, and other similar types of responses to people and situations. Ultimately, if you're looking at what psychiatry can offer somebody who's dealing with schizophrenic, and I've looked into this very deeply in preparation for this class, what they will tell you is that they rely on antipsychotic medications, uh, psychotropic meds. These have very, very serious impact on brain chemistry, brain function in order to control the symptoms. They also have physical symptoms of other kinds as well. But the main issues is 
there's a great blunting and slowing and numbing effect produced by these medications in order for uh, the person to be able to function better. Not well, but better. So when you have schizophrenia, usually it has to do with uh, relational issues which progress into relational worsening with rebellion and like issues. We are going to get into the psych side of it and get into that right now so that you have, you know, as it were, the factual aspect of schizophrenia. You have hallucinations, seeing, hearing, experiencing things that others don't see or understand. Uh, some people would say, you're seeing things that aren't there. Well, we're not saying whether or not they're there, but we're saying that you are the only one experiencing them. Um, many people who are not very gracious will say, you're seeing things, you're hearing things. Delusions, things that people think are going on, which again, nobody else experiences. Nobody else can hear it, nobody else can see it. <clears throat> many times this has to do with people feeling as though they can, their thoughts are being broadcast and others can read their minds and hear their thoughts. Many times they have what psychiatrists call negative symptoms. Negative symptoms refer to things that are striking people whereby they cannot participate fully in ordinary activities. They're dull, they're slow, they have trouble thinking, trouble feeling, emotionally very flat, can't engage, can't stay with things like they used to. They function in a slow, flat, and blunted manner. This is very troubling to those that know them and care about them. They show very little interest in life and relationships and things that people ordinarily see that they used to like, and now, now they don't. Cognitive issues, disorganized thinking, can't understand things, can't grasp things, can't remember things. People are very troubled and they don't know what to do. Now, the causes, there are many causes that are postulated. There hasn't been a great deal that's been clearly seen scientifically to come in. You'll see that this is very difficult and very tricky. One of the main things that we, we can say is that it seems to be environmentally or genetically affected. Mort mortality and morbidity. Um, this, see, this refers to whether people get sick or whether people die. Um, there's generally somewhere between one in 150 more or less people will suffer from schizophrenia mild or severe at some point in their life. Sometimes you see more of this in people who have family members. If somebody is uh, related to another person that has schizophrenia, very much more likely to come down with it themselves. What you've got also is a very serious increase in suicide risk. Schizophrenia is very serious risk for suicide. If somebody has family members, their schizophrenia is seen in the families at a much greater, greater degree. Sometimes you'll see OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression. Many times this is the most early presenting symptom. They see things and people say, oh, well, they might work them up for depression or OCD and find out that there are other issues as well. And they come to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Uh, many times people who uh, have schizophrenia, it correlates very strongly with cigarette smoking. It's not known whether that's part of an addictive thing or a compensatory thing, but don't be surprised if somebody with schizophrenia is a smoker, about half of them are. Many of the times people are seeing very strong delusions. They're seeing very powerful things. They think people are um, after them. They think that people are reading their minds. They think that people are you know, out to get them and nobody else thinks so. <clears throat> This is seen also in what is called targeted individual uh, syndrome. Many people in today's society feel that 
people are out to get them. People are really going to be after them, but nobody else can see it. But they're firmly convinced that this is the case. Delusions, fixed beliefs, there's persecution. People think somebody's after them or everybody's after them. The NSA is after them. The, the New World Order is after them. Some people feel like they're getting messages from other people, messages from computers, messages from outer space. People saying, feeling as though they are the recipients of messages. Now they could also get this from, in a prophetic way, feeling like, like they're getting messages from God. Uh, many people get grandiose ideas, like they're somebody important and special. Everybody should treat them special because they're geniuses or they're great successes. Um, seeing, well, that, I know that person loves me. I know he loves me because, you know, I just know. And that person may not even know the individual, but the individual with schizophrenia often is convinced that this or that person is hopelessly in love and it's just a matter of time before they come around. Um, sometimes they feel like they're invincible, that they can eat or drink anything and there will be no problem. They can live any kind of lifestyle and there will be no ramifications for them. Um, so these are the kind of delusional things that can come up. Um, females are more often diagnosed than males, but males typically have a worse outcome. About 20% of people diagnosed with schizophrenia attempt suicide at some time. Uh, five to 10%, uh, five to 6% of people um, may complete suicide. They attempt suicide and they end up killing themselves, maybe 5% of schizophrenic patients. Very, very serious business. And another, um, another situation that's very interesting, people with, um, People who are immigrants, people who are not born around here, but they come here from someplace else, they tend to be diagnosed with schizophrenia more commonly than people who grew up, whatever city or town you live in. People who come from other places seem to have a greater incidence of this. Another study, other studies show that people who grow up in um, people in a household with a lot of anger and hostility and frustration, a lot of yelling and screaming and carrying on, these people tend to develop schizophrenia uh, in a, to a much greater extent than others. And really what you've got, serious stuff. And in, from a psych perspective, the only thing that can be expected to take care of things really seriously is psychiatric medications. OCD found very commonly in this population. And really what you've got is people under the conviction that they are seeing, hearing, experiencing things that others are not seeing or hearing. They are convinced that things are going on that are real, as real as you and I see things, but others don't see it very tricky, very troubling, and it can be very hard because nobody believes them. They're convinced that this or that is happening, but nobody else can see it. And so they know that they're being looked at with disbelief, which is very troubling. Um, these are the things that are really, really difficult for this population. Complications, um, as I said, suicide, anxiety, OCD, depression, substance abuse, especially smoking, inability to stick with it and succeed at work or in school, inability to manage money, lots of homelessness in this population, relational difficulty, social isolation. People don't wanna go out because they know they're being looked at as being strange or weird. They know people look at them funny and treat them funny. So it's a disincentive for them to wanna to go out all sorts of victimizations happen as well in this population. People feeling like they can't get a break. Nobody will ever believe them. They can't have a normal life. Like I said, there's a, a, more than a small number of schizophrenics who feel that their thoughts can be perceived or understood by others. That like if I'm going someplace and I 
think somebody's very attractive and I want to, I want to get to know them, they feel that this person knows what I'm thinking. And this person standing next, next to me can tell what I'm thinking and he knows that I like this person and I want to do something. You feel like you're exposed and naked. Your thoughts are not private. They're not your own. Many people can see them. Maybe only a small number can see them. But the idea of broadcasting thoughts is very common in this population. Very troubling because if somebody is convinced that their thoughts are being perceived or understood by others, it's real, real hard to want to go out and be with people because you feel weird, because you feel like everybody else can read your mind, they can see all your sins, they can see all your memories and your history, and there's nothing you can do to stop them from knowing you better than you know yourself, because they can read your mind. This is super, super depressing for many people, and it leads to a great deal of social isolation. Many people are wavering, unsure, indecisive, unstable, hopeless, despairing, angry, frustrated, depressed. You know, if you're looking at the symptoms of uh, schizophrenia, these are the things that, this is why people are so frustrated is because they don't have a normal life. And many times they've been going through this for a long time and they're despairing of ever having a normal life. So, this is really, really tough. If you're dealing with somebody with schizophrenia, they're likely being cared for by a therapist, psychiatrist, or other mental health professional, healthcare professional. They will try to see what's going on and they may come to you and say, is there anything you can do? Because some of them know that deliverance ministers regard this as a spiritual problem, a demonic problem, and they are really wanting to get help and they're willing to consider that deliverance and prayer and healing from God can be something that they're really needing. Many people who come to you, if you have a deliverance ministry and you see, see people coming, it's really good to know what the symptoms are so that you can assess, does this person in fact have psychiatric illness? Or put another way, are they under demonic oppression to the extent that they appear to be schizophrenic and would be diagnosed and treated as such? Many schizophrenics have been hospitalized against their will. Um, if they are picked up on the street, they're not making sense, they're mumbling, they obviously can't take care of themselves, they look really unkempt, they can't interact with people. Many times they'll be given an overnight psych admission for a hospital maybe two days worth and see, okay, we're gonna find out what's the matter with this person. Much of this comes in from trauma. Trauma is so underestimated in deliverance ministry. Trauma happens to almost everybody and demons piggyback on top of trauma. They seek it out. They know this is their golden opportunity to be able to get on somebody's life, get on their case, and just go in and take care of them. This is very serious business. Like I said, growing up in a very loud household full of conflict, full of unpleasant emotions, this can be traumatic for especially a young person. Many people experience trauma as infants or young children. And so they pick this up and they pick up a lot of demonic oppression at, at the same time. One of the things that you need to do is just make sure, <clears throat> like I said last week, introduction to caring for somebody who's got mental illness or something that looks and sounds like it. Love, care, patience, concern, listening, loving, taking care of people and knowing what do they need. Most of all, they need love. Most of all, they need love. And so we need to love them, care for them, pray for them, and get people healed so that they can regain normal function and get back into society. Many of the many times people have been to various doctors, various deliverance ministers, healing teams, prayer teams, you name it, and they see nothing happening. 
it's very frustrating for them if they um, feel like there's no hope. That just bur burdens them more and more heavily. And this is really very serious and discouraging for people. Many, many, of the, uh, many of the things that people talk to and talk about are just their feelings of depression, anxiety, worry, fear, hopelessness that never go away. They never change. And it's really, really serious business. Now, if somebody is dealing with schizophrenia, you want to, from a prayer perspective, you want to be very careful you don't want to tip them into a psychotic episode by confronting demons, confronting them, attempting to talk them into stuff and so forth. It's very serious and we need to be very careful. We'll deal with this more next week. We need to get into, um, get them into the word. We need to get them into prayer. We need to do a lot of the standard discipleship aftercare type of things with people. Now, if you are dealing with somebody who's got schizophrenia or you have symptoms, what you're going to want to do is go and you want to see, does this person have any history of trauma? If they've got trauma, you want to try to find out what's going on. What is the background of the trauma and how to pray? If somebody is troubled, you want to be able to say, look, I can help you, you need to trust me. Jesus took authority over the demons while he was walking on the earth. He's still giving authority over demons right now. If somebody is seeing a therapist, a doctor, psychiatrist or something like that, you wanna be very careful not to leave the impression that such treatment is means that they don't have faith, that they are weak, that they are not going to recover because they're just hooked up with the medical system. You don't want to be beating them up with sermons about pharmacia. You don't want to be giving them negative feedback so that they are very discouraged. Hey, look, they come to a Christian and they go away feeling under condemnation. You don't want them to feel under condemnation. You want them to feel encouraged. And so our feeling is if they're, if they're getting medical help right now, don't rock their boat, don't shake them up, don't make them feel condemned or looked down upon. Make them feel like, okay, from here, we are going to take and take a very different approach to things. You still gotta keep your appointments with your therapist or your doctor or whoever, but we are gonna be working at the root causes. Help them to understand that the root causes are root causes. The medications only treat symptoms. The medications are not able to treat the root causes because the doctors actually don't understand the root causes. I've read paper after paper and website after website in preparation for this class. And the bottom line is doctors have their ideas and there are certain studies that indicate that various things have risk factors. Like I said, um, the kind of household you grew up in, being an immigrant, genetics, these things are important. But one thing that you need to know is there hasn't been anything isolated as this causes schizophrenia. There is no such thing. There's no such understanding within the medical community. They have the ability to say, in general, schizophrenia correlates with this or that risk factor. But we can't say that if you've got this risk factor, you will develop schizophrenia. Or if somebody comes with schizophrenia, they're not always able to pinpoint why the person developed it. Now, one thing that they see very strongly is a correlation with genetics and relatives. This correlates with our conviction that generational issues are a very important predictor of whether somebody will have demonic oppression. This is especially true if somebody has mental illness, 
if they have, for example, Freemasonry, witchcraft, or other types of occultism in their backgrounds, that is in their ancestors and their ancestors' background, you want to be very sure that you go after the generational issues. Treat it like they would treat genetics. What you have is somebody who has generational influences that are affecting them. And we know from a deliverance perspective that generational issues are very important and we can't overlook them if we want somebody to be free. In general, what you're looking at is you want to be able to understand what's going on with the person's life and you want to be helping them to do the basics of discipleship and following Jesus. You want to be able to help them to read the Bible, listen to the Bible. You want them to be able to listen to uplifting spiritual praise music. You want to help them to pray, to do the things that they know God wants them to do. Now, it's very common in people with schizophrenia, it's very common to say, well, I, I, I try reading the Bible, I try praying, and nothing works. I can't pray, I can't read my Bible and they feel flat. Well, you need to help them. And sometimes they will need help maybe having somebody read aloud to them or play Bible on recordings, whether it's a video or a podcast or something else. You want to help them to get the word into them. The right music is very, very powerful. And many people report that they're very helped by having praise and worship music that's very uplifting and very life-giving. You want to give them life. You also want to help them understand what's going on with the fruits of rejection, rebellion, anger, bitterness, depression, and hopelessness. When you see these attitudes, you want to help, to, you want to help them to understand these are part of the problem these are part of the root causes. It's not just something that's a symptom, but it's something where it's part of the root cause. And you want to be able to say, look, this is what you need to do. You need to watch out, watch your words, watch the things that you're saying, watch the things that you're doing, and don't do things which are going to be, as it were, making things worse by um, perpetuating attitudes, actions, words that go. You're going to want to pray much for them. Pray that anything in their life that has led to schizophrenia or is helping it to become more deeply rooted, that God would heal it and that the Holy Spirit would take it out. You need to be very careful to pray, 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 and pray. Read scripture over them. Bind the works of the enemy. Pray for their minds, their nerves, their brains, their genetics, their DNA, their molecular structure. Pray for these things to be healed. Many times, many people feel that the molecular structure, DNA, and their genetics is very important here. And I would go along with that. Molecular structure is something that you get from your parents. And again, this is just another issue where you have um, risk factors, the doctors will look at it one way, we would look at it another way. What we want to do is we want to be looking at stuff and saying, where do we go? How do we see things? And how do we understand these things to be working? So we are going to pray for a few minutes and we're gonna pray over these spirits, and these effects that schizophrenia has had on people. Now, I'm gonna combine some of the uh, insights that have come down to us from Frank and Ida May Hammond in Pigs in the Parlor. Their work in Pigs in the Parlor was a major, major breakthrough in the understanding of schizophrenia from a deliverance perspective. And I'm gonna use some of their insights to pray. I'm gonna be praying over personal characteristics, spirits, habits, outlook, all together, and we're going to go after these in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray healing 
for trauma, healing for life events that have impacted these people very much more troubling. And we're going to pray that spirits would be bound and cast out in the name of Jesus. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus, and we say, no harm will befall us, no disaster will come near our tent, and we say no more to the works of darkness. We bind the enemy, we bind the works of darkness, and we bind all of Satan's schemes against our friends, loved ones, or anyone that we know who is dealing with these kind of symptoms. And we take authority over them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we speak to inferiority and, in, and insecurity. Go in the name of Jesus. We pray healing over these feelings. Fantasies, lust, perversions, fear, self-accusations. Go in the name of Jesus. Healing for the parts of the soul that leave people open to these in the name of Jesus. Jealousy and envy, go in the name of Jesus. Suspicion, distrust, perseverance persecution, fear, confrontation, accusing other people. In the name of Jesus, we command you to leave and get out in the name of Jesus. Rebellion, self-will, selfishness, stubbornness, in the name of Jesus, go. Self-deception, self-delusion, self-seduction, self-pity, depression, despondency, despair, discouragement, hopelessness, suicide, guilt, in the name of Jesus. We order you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. We bind you and we cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. Spirits of fantasies, daydreams in the name of Jesus. Lust and perversion go in the name of Jesus. Murder, retaliation, anger, unforgiveness, violence in the name of Jesus. Resentment, hatred, control, possessiveness in the name of Jesus. We say no more in the name of Jesus. We speak to all spirits causing schizophrenia, causing mind control problems to come in. We speak to every spirit causing hallucinations and delusions. We bind you, we silence you, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. All spirits causing people to have flatness, dullness, lack of interest, depression, despair. We bind you and we cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. Jumbled thinking, muddled thinking, hopelessness, despair, discouragement, depression, in the name of Jesus, we speak to you, all spirits that have anything to do with these symptoms, and all spirits working with you, we bind you, we smite you with the name of Jesus, we smite you with the blood of Jesus, and we cast you out right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for every part of people who have schizophrenia, we pray for every, every trauma, every hurt, every memory that has been troubled, that has been hindered. In the name of Jesus, we say no more. We call upon Father, the Holy Spirit, and the angels of God to come and heal these ones in the name of Jesus. We speak to the, to the Father and say, Father, please send your Holy Spirit and your angels to minister healing and recovery and wholeness where there has been any trauma, any abuse, any terror, any triggers, anything implanted in the person we say healing and res restoration in the name of Jesus. And so Father, we call upon your power and your love to bring wholeness, healing and restoration in every case, in every part of the person's body, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, right now, we pray that as we look around and we see people who are dealing with these kinds of situations, that you would make us healers, people who are compassionate, loving, and caring, who can go and they can minister the healing power of Jesus Christ in these situations, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. This is Bruce Gordon from Multiplying Freedom Ministries. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and look at the other videos that we've got up there. Practically anything having to do with healing and deliverance, it's there. Our website is multiplyingfreedom.com. On Facebook, we are at Multiplying Freedom. 
and our group, Deliverance Help and Discussion, come on in. We're hoping that you will come and experience a group where people share knowledge, insights, prayer requests, and answers to prayer. In the name of Jesus, next time, look for our video dealing with schizophrenia from a deliverance perspective. Schizophrenia and deliverance setting captives free. Until then, God bless you.